Hi everybody, all my followers be welcome to another video. So the video today it's on a Mini Cooper S 2009 1.6 turbo petrol and um, I was to start this car slightly different uh, in a slightly different way because I was to show you how the car is running first however I don't want to do it because um, by the looks of it when the car warms up it pretty much runs okay which is a little bit weird um, especially uh, knowing what the problem might be with this um, still I will take you through the lot even because I don't know yet what the problem is I just know uh, a little bit of uh, the story with this car um, and not uh, dwelling too much on the story uh, this car came from a garage that um, that has been trying to fix this problem um, and successfully now um, the car went there initially apparently because it would run a little bit rough um, and it wouldn't idle properly something like that uh, upon arrival uh, was noticed a timing chain rattling um, the car had a timing chain kit uh, actually on inspection they found the top uh, timing chain guide or runner or something like that it was actually broken um, so they, they fitted an, uh, a timing chain kit they adjusted the timing on the car uh, all that stuff and uh, the car was running fine for apparently two days and after that it came back with the same problem or shall I say with the same symptoms we can have the same problem caused by different things so the car came back to the to this uh, garage with the same symptoms and what the car does uh, is it starts really rough um, it shuts itself off is very difficult to idle to keep it idling um, it, it runs like a bag of crisps yeah <laughs> uh, so yeah it runs really really poorly um, no power at all by the looks of it is is running really bad now I was there when they were working on this car um, and I've seen them uh, do you and check so I'm, I'm just taking you through this so you guys understand why I'm I'm not gonna do or skipping some tests uh, because I've seen them already uh, been done and I know the, 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 the results so they tested so that the codes on the car he had uh, apparently at the beginning he had like uh, multiple misfirings etc etc uh, all that uh, believed now that was caused by the timing chain uh, at the moment the car has faults for um, high pressure fuel now the when uh, when uh, when I was there uh, one of the times I was there they were testing the fuel pump the fuel pressure from the, the pump in the tank I've seen the gauge it was about five bars which is more than good um, I believe I believe that's why it needs about for this car but the on the high pressure side Things are slightly different now I don't want to be here running the car for too long because I want to try the car while it's cold because as I've, as I've said when once the car warms up uh, apparently it runs okay I'm, I've not seen that but I'm just trusting what I was told now um, just to, to, to very quick start then uh, we're gonna scan the car and I will show you what the codes are in the ECU so let's gonna scan this Uh, by the way this is the n14 engine just in case i don't know if there's going to be any more codes now because they've been working on the car but hopefully we'll have there we go so we have this one which um actually they mentioned to me something about this that this only came up uh later it was not there at the beginning uh, and we have high pressure system which he says absent until we try to start the engine and fuel co quantity control valve activation uh, I know they've been working um, around there because I, I told them to measure a few things but they were unsure how to do it so um, I guess they, they, they had the valve disconnected so uh, but we, what we're gonna do now and just to show you while the car is cold we're gonna clear all these codes okay so no codes came back and I want to show you this uh, fuel high pressure fuel Okay, so let's gonna look for my these two and we can put that one as well injection time adaptation of fuel delivery control I don't think we need that let's just look at these ones so 
<clears throat> so that's the actual pressure. That's the pressure the car is going to ask for. And that's the control valve duty cycle. So we're going to crank the engine. We're going to try to start the engine actually. And we'll see what happens to these values. Look at that. So it's asking for five, six bars and look at my actual pressure. You see 0 0.76, it doesn't change from there. Even though the car is asking for way more, the car runs really, really poorly. It starts to miss firing all over the place. It starts to rattle as well on the exhaust. It's running really bad really bad and uh, oops it's gonna go no no not yet there we go engine faults the accelerator does not respond until you wait a few there we go any shutdown okay so there we go so as you've seen my rail pressure is not being uh, achieved uh, we're now gonna go back into the read codes again and there we go so we have these uh, plausibility of tank fuel level um, not really sure about that one yet um, and we have the high pressure system and that's where I'm gonna focus uh, based on what we have seen now on the live data that's where we're gonna focus now I know for a fact as well guys that this car had a new pump a new high pressure pump fitted um, if you guys know these pumps, they are quite, quite prone to fail. He had a brand new one fitted, however, was a non-genuine pump. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it could have been. It could have been that. But uh, anyway, they put the car would run exactly the same. So they put the old pump back on, and I believe that's the pump that's fitted right now. So we're gonna do a few checks, and uh, the first thing I want to check actually. Um, well, I need to connect the battery charger as well, the battery maintainer. Um, what, we, what I want to do now is I want to see if I actually have the signal getting into my uh, regulator. Because even though we're saying at the bottom was uh, the duty cycle was about 50%, um, that's what the ECU is doing. It doesn't have faults for that, uh, but for the valve but we don't know let's gonna check it and go from there okay and just before we carry on let me show you one more time how the engine actually runs I'll show you it's gonna go off I think And that's it. So as you have seen, it runs really bad. So uh, so let's gonna get in the engine bay and start to do some checks. Okay, so uh, the first thing I wanna check is if I have a good pulse at my uh, fuel pressure regulator, which is a valve right underneath here. Now, I told them to check that, but I never told them to pierce any wires. There was no need to pierce any wires. Don't know why they did it. Crap. I should have told them to do nothing. Anyway, let's gonna put this back in place. Back probe this. Uh, and just one more quick, sorry about that guys. Just one more quick before we go uh, forward, before we carry on, is that when the DCU actually goes on to limp mode, or once the car goes into limp mode and stops attempting to control the fuel as you can see now he's not trying to control nothing so he's not asking for any set point what happens is the car idles perfect idles absolutely fine you get is nearly undrivable still uh, if I press the throttle because there is no fuel it starts to miss and uh, and etc etc but it idles absolutely fine as I'm gonna show you Okay. 
Okay, so I knew I should have recorded it. Unfortunately, I didn't and you have, you're gonna have to take my word for it. So, this is the plug for my um, fuel regulator or fuel pressure regulator, wherever you, solenoid, whatever you wanna call it. Now, this plug, there is only two wires on it. One should have permanent 12 volts and the other one um, uh, should have the ground pulse to control the valve or vice versa. I'm not sure which way it works but um, usually it's 12 volts permanent and then it grounds to control the valve. Uh, a pulse width modulation PWM. Now when I first tested it I've seen the 12 volts here. Then after a few starts etc those 12 volts were gone and I was a little bit confused why the 12 volts were gone. I couldn't measure it now. So I came here and this fuse is blown. I'm going to show you right there now we're gonna replace this and see if I start to have 12 volts in there again uh, because it looks like I just don't know why it blowed uh, why it blown because I haven't short anything so unless there is a wiring problem somewhere that is causing that to happen okay so let's gonna put a new fuse Let's see. And my 12 volts are back. Okay, so let's just confirm. So if I take, I'm on the way, am I? So let me keep that in there so you can see it. So if I take that 25 amp fuse out, I lose the voltage in there. So, but this fuse was good before. I just don't understand why it did blow doesn't make any sense at all so I'm gonna try something here okay so Okay, so hold a second. Put that in there. It's not grounded. Let me ground the scope. Okay. It's gonna do it. A wiggle test. Just to make sure there's nothing here blowing my fuse. Okay, it looks like there isn't. Okay, so that's good then. Now let me take the ground from Ooh. Oh, this is a weird signal. This is a real weird signal. So I should have a pulse from 0 volts to 12 volts and this is what I got. Doesn't look right to me. Let me go a little bit more like that. So what I have is, is pulsing from 9 volts to 1280 which is battery voltage. Never actually comes down to 0 volts. This is not going to be able to pulse the valve. Okay, this is weird. Now, unless we had an, a wiring problem, this is really weird. It shouldn't be like this. Definitely, it shouldn't be like this. Okay, let's um, let's just do something else. Okay, and I decided to switch from Maxisys to Eister. The main reason is because hopefully Eister will give us information that um, Maxisys wouldn't. So uh, I'm gonna do a quick scan, go through the, the menus. I'm gonna try to find the information I wanna show you, which hopefully it will be here. And this is mainly, guys, for the for the video. Um, I could well carry on with the Maxisys um, and, and, uh, and uh, because I'm pretty sure that pulse is not correct. Uh, it shouldn't be like that and um, but nevertheless, I'm going to try to come here because ideally, ideally, I would like to see if I can command that valve to pulse 
which I cannot do that with the Maxisys, but hopefully uh, iStar will allow me to, so we can have a better understanding, and mainly for the video guys, as I said, uh, as well, for me as well, but mainly for the video, so you can guys understand a little bit more how things work, etc, etc, so let me go through the menus here, so this is the first scan, as you can see, loads of issues with codes, all these issues on orange means uh, they have fault codes, the green ones means they are okay, if it was red, uh, I think if it was red, it would mean no communication or something like that. So, so yeah, let me go through this and uh, and we'll be back in a second. Okay, and I just want to quick show you that under uh, normal circumstances, under normal scan, uh, I'm going to go here on component triggering, you're going to see that, well, I don't know if I've showed you this menu, but uh, on the Maxis is, the, but the Maxis is, gives you exact the same options. Um, and the here, High fuel pressure is gives you the exact same live data. Maxis is on this is very good. Is actuations that sometimes in the test plan, when you when you create a test plan here, um, he actually gives you extra um, extra capabilities where the Maxis is not always does. So that's the main thing here. Maxis is will do that on some cars, not on others. Uh, so yeah, that's just the way it is. Okay, and this is exactly what I wanted to get, so I'm right now on the test plan that hopefully I think will allow me to... Yes, there we go, so it will allow me to um, to activate the valve, which we are going to do. So if I press continue... So it should right now be... So this is a fuel system description, you can pause and read if you want. But right now it should be um, actuating my valve, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and it looks like I was doing uh, something that I shouldn't be doing, which was uh, testing the signal without the load. So I should have thought about that. I do apologize for that. I will leave this mistake on the video. So at the moment I have the valve connected, so each, uh, each square is 5 volts. So we have about 12 volts, well 12.16 there. And uh, if I go like that, as you can see, the valve is being pulsed. And it's being pulsed to 12 volts. It looks okay to me. Um, so, yeah, it looks okay to me. Uh, let me just do... Uh, mm, let me do just one thing. Okay, so the, the 12 volts feed I know is okay in the load because we tested it earlier. I want to test the signal that is coming from the ECU. So I'm not going to see obviously the test light flashing, but it should start to glow. There we go. So right now I'm test loading. There we go. It is good. So the load is good coming from the ECU. The, the wiring. So tested the wires uh, and the load, so it looks okay. So we can now carry on with this. So we haven't found an issue with this by the looks of it. So let's gonna continue. That should just end this. Okay. Okay, right now is resetting. Uh, it reset all the adaptation values. Unit is rebooting. So it just rebooted the ECU. And I believe this is completed now. So he, he did a reset as part of the test plan. Switch off terminal ignition for at least 10 seconds. Recheck, repair, carry it out. Press continue. Try and proceed. So let's kind of turn ignition on, off, sorry. Leave it off for 10 seconds and then I'll try to start the car again. And uh, he, I just checked quickly the diagrams. So as you can see, my valve is right here. There is a orange and a white wire. The orange is my... 87 so it's my voltage that's my 31 is the ground so as you can see it's coming from my white wiring my white wire and my fuel my rail pressure sensor is a three wire sensor uh, once again everything goes into the dme uh, i hope the sensor is good so it's right at the back oh crap it's not easy to get to it okay um We'll leave it like that for now. Um, okay, so uh, I don't know what to check next, to be honest with you. Um, mm, what to check next? Uh, let's gonna start the engine. And I wanna see if my signal there changed at all. 
So let's do it. There he is. Pulsing absolutely perfect. Can you see that? And the car is running fine. Maybe it just needed a. Oh no, he's not there. Oh, actually, is. Maybe just needed a. Uh, um, adaptations reset. Let's see what we have now on my live data for fuel pressure. He's actually running quite well now. So maybe <laughs> that's all he needed. Uh, Component oh, diagnose scan. It's going to go to I fuel pressure. Let's see the adaptation value just to see why it shows now. Uh, it shows the same adaptation. It's going to go to that one. Uh, rail pressure. That and that. Uh, it's still the same look. There's no reading from there. Doesn't show any. There, there is faults on the engine. I haven't deleted the faults actually. Silly boy. Yeah, and right now the ECU stopped commanding the valve. As you can see, he stopped trying to command the valve. So right so it started again let me try to start the engine without cleaning the faults see why it does it's trying to come in the valve again and then when it triggers the fault the engine goes in limp mode and it stops that Funny thing is accelerating the engine doesn't change that. And it should do. Let's see what he's gonna do. Just let me come here to my DME. He's still pulsing right now. Oh dear. There we go. Engine fault. And he stopped. Okay. Mission on. Let's um I know I don't need this do I? I've just done the issue test. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's fine. Let me Okay, delete all the fault memories. Yes. It's gonna clear the faults and then we'll be back. Okay, risk and done. Uh, only one fault on the FRM module. Uh, still don't think that would cause any issues for us. Uh, let's gonna start the engine again. It just went off the, mod the scope. So there it is. Still running crap. What is really weird is that my thing in there doesn't really change. I think I'm gonna check the sensor. I think I'm going to check that sensor. Because that sensor, guys, it is stuck. Just hold a second. It is stuck at 0 0.70 something. It doesn't really change at all. Do we have a bad say? Okay, engine, engine thing. Now it's gonna stop. Uh, so I fresh a fuel system. So let me go, bang, bang, and bang. 
so red state see it's, it's rate pressure is, is stuck at 0 0.77 uh, so we might have a bad say or 78 we might have a bad sensor there uh, let me go back to my diagrams for the sensor if I still remember where that is uh, it's a rear fog light that's the fault in there so service functions I think I think it is so powertrain engine Where the heck? Automatic. What the hell was that? Oh, he's not going to show me that now because I don't have the bloody fault. Damn it. Check. Might need to scan the car again to make these faults to come back. Crap. Okay, so my diagram is right there. So we're gonna check the. So that should have voltage, the orange wire. That should have. Oh dear, what have I done? Oh, the, yeah, this is a touch screen. Sorry about that. So the sensor is right at the back. So we're gonna check pin one, two, and three. So we're gonna check these here and make sure we have uh, everything the way it should. Hey guys, found the issue. Well, I didn't found the issue yet, but I roughly know where the issue is. So let's see if he's still doing the same. So look at that, and look what happens now when I accelerate. You see, that's what I was expecting earlier. And as you've seen, that was not happening. So the car is, is uh, idling fine, is responding okay to the accelerator. It's running perfect, absolutely perfect. Now all I've done was try to reach this sensor right at the back. Oh, shut up! Right at the back under the manifold, right there. I was trying to reach that sensor. As I was touching the wires, etc., I start to hear this ticking noise. Came here, restart the engine, bang, running fine. And straight away on the scope, I could see that. So obviously I can't leave it like this, something is there underneath that I can't really see that is causing the issue. Uh, all we're going to do, I think I'm going to need to take the manifold to inspect properly, the intake manifold. We might do that, that's going to get there, but I'm really happy that we start to find something. Okay guys, and uh, I just don't know what to say. So manifold is off, checked all the wiring, um, all the plugs, I can't see nothing damaged warned everything looks okay to me um everything looks okay to me and uh unless it was a poor contact on the plug so i have the five volts at my pressure sensor um uh, the only thing i can think of is if it was a, a poor contact at uh, this plug, I can't really think about anything else. Um, as I said, everything's connected. I can't see anything touching anywhere. Okay, and this is like a few days later because I've been working, etc. And uh, but I've done quite a lot of work off camera. So, I've uh, fitted the, I don't know if I already mentioned that in, in, in the past, uh, but uh, I've asked for the replacement for the new pump they bought, which is uh, right there, um, and I put it in and the car runs exactly the same. So, that's a, a new pump, an aftermarket pump, uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's good. Now, the only thing in this system that could still be, be a problem would be the pressure sensor and I think that was just a coincidence that I've touched something there or I was messing around there and the car just started to run okay. I think it was purely a coincidence. Um, uh, now ideally, ideally I would be able to force uh, 50 or 100 um, bars 
into that sensor and I should be able to see that pressure on my light data. Uh, now I don't have a tool for that nor I have a tool to put on the outfeed uh, of the new fuel pressure pump to prove that is actually giving the pressure and is actually the, the, the reading system, the sensor or the ECU itself that is now reading. However, and this is why I think that's not really my problem. At the moment, so the car has been uh, off. I haven't started the car today. Um, I've actually just fitted the the used pump, the, 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 the faulty pump, okay? I just fit it back on. I don't know exactly if that's gonna make any sense right now, guys, because I, I completely forgot everything I said, uh, the, the rest of the clips, but I'll, when I edit, it, I'll try to make some sense out of this. So when I was, uh, so yeah, I put the, the pump this morning and I've, I've removed the fuse for the pump in the tank. And right now, so there's no pressure on the low side and I have 0 0.33 uh, megapascals. That's about 3.3 bars. Should actually be reading close to zero to be fair with you. But if you uh, notice when you actually crank the engine that goes to 0 0.3. 70 something it's about seven bars which is roughly what I've seen on the gauge uh, when they were testing it was like six bars or somewhere around there um, so it might be that the sensor is reading okay and because that changes that means my ECU is actually reading something and the sensor is reading something I really hope it's not the sensor I have a feeling that's going to be by um, my pump um, I would love to see uh, the pump uh, you remember when it was running okay and you've seen on the scope uh, proper pulsing the, the the valve everything working properly I would love to have seen the live data unfortunately I didn't so uh, oh dear I seriously I don't have the right tools for this job I should have a gauge a fuel pressure gauge that I could read the up to the 120 bars at least so I could actually test the high side. Um, but what I'm gonna do now, because the fuse is removed for the pump, I'm gonna put the, the fuse, uh, and I wanna see that's going up from 0 0.33, uh, which shows the reading side is gonna be kinda okay, although I, I can't guarantee you the, the sensor is not stuck and is not reading all the way up. But if the pump is not reading, is not uh, 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 outputting that pressure, obviously the sensor is not gonna read it anyway. It is, it's really, oh dear. Or a catch 22, whatever they say, is is a tricky one. This one. Okay, I'm going to crank the engine. Hopefully, we'll start. I don't have nothing there that's gonna fall off, and uh, that should go up because this pump only runs when you crank the engine. So that should go up to 0 0.70 something, I think it is. And obviously, my uh, set point, rate pressure set point, should go up to five etc 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 so let's gonna start this there we go 0 0.84 it even went a little bit higher than before there we go it's running like a bag of crisps <laughs> it's running really bad and in a minute the the control valve is gonna stop trying to activate as you've seen that in the past it actually just shut off. It actually shut off. Okay. It's gonna start it again. Oh dear, I'd love to see the live data that one time where you run okay. Unfortunately, it's not okay it's running poorly again but you've seen it went from three bars to about eight bars so the fuel sensor is indeed reading something and my ECU is reading the data is 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 seeing the values oh there we go so when I accelerate look 1.3 which means about 10 bars even though it's not actuating the valve now. It's 
So that's just the pressure of the low pressure. Oh, there's a lot of glare. Just, come on, give me some bright. Okay, let's stop the engine again. Let's see if that activates the valve again. He went to about 10 bars or something like that, didn't he? At some point. There we go. Trying to... One, 10 bars there, look at that. As he tries to... 13 bars. Eleven bars, twelve. So I, I, I'm going to put my money on this pump, even though I can't fully test the system. Uh, but I'm going to put my money on the pump. So I'm going to doom this pump as faulty. Um, and yeah, it's going to get a new pump, I guess, and go from there. Okay, look at that. And this, my friends, is with the same old pump now. I was told by the the guy speaking to him he said to me once the car is warmed up that he runs okay so I decide to check and it kind of does so once he's warmed up he starts to read the pressure look at that so so right now Right now, I don't know if my problem, I think is the pump, but why does the pump start to read once it's warmed? Or starts to pump properly once it's warmed? I don't know. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, and like a week later, it's really cold outside today. Uh, it was about minus one or minus two uh, in the morning. It's now nearly 10 o'clock. It's getting a little bit better, uh, but still everything is still frost outside. Um, anyway, so what I've done afterwards, guys, I don't know if I mentioned this, uh, but I've done it again, uh, because earlier when, um, when we were scoping and all of a sudden the car started to run, um, I, I believe it was when I, excuse me, I believe it was when I touched those wires underneath and uh, I thought it was something there uh, to do with the wires. I think it wasn't, it was just the fact that the engine was getting warm and it just started to read. It just started to, to, to make pressure as we have seen um, uh, on, the, on, the, on the live data. So it is weird that the pump starts to pump when it's warm so at this point guys after this clip I've done a little bit off camera so what I've done guys um, I don't know if I mentioned this already in the past because I've done it before as well or in between these clips I can't I can't remember now um, but what I've done is I've uh, warmed up that uh, sensor with a hot hair gun I warmed up the sensor with the engine cold and started up straight away because I thought okay it might be the sensor that is you know, when he's cold, he's, he has some uh, dry solder inside, something like that, and when he warms up, makes contact. So I warmed up the sensor, uh, it made no difference, uh, same problem. Um, the ECU, I doubt is the ECU, because the ECU never really gets warm uh, where he is. Although he's close to the engine, um, he never really gets that warm, so I don't think that's going to be my issue. Um, so therefore, speaking, the, the, the owner is a little bit desperate to get the car back. Um, so what they decided to do was to get another pump. Um, I haven't got, I haven't opened the box yet, so I'm going to open the box. I don't know what pump they got. If they got a brand new one from BMW, if, if there's another second hand, if there's another uh, third party pump. So let's go and open that box and see exactly what they got me. Okay, and the box is already kind of open. Okay, they got me a pump here. It's, it's not original, so that's for sure. It's another, probably third party pump. So let's gonna put this in. Let's gonna put it in and see what happens. I really hope my problem was the pump and that the, the, the third party pump they got me, they first fitted, that was not me. 
that was actually at fault as well and that this now is good the hold pump is out we are now going to put the new one which it is new one but you know what I mean Let's see if it stays here so what we have here okay this is indeed no return if removed blah 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 okay I could not really swear that this pump is now new, is reconditioned. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. It might be that it's actually new. Still, it's going to fit this in and see what happens. Okay, so everything's in place. So this pump, uh, the pump in the tank only runs when you actually crank the engine. So I uh, will be expecting that um, the first few attempts until the fuel gets to here, um, it's, it's gonna, it's not gonna run okay. But hopefully, he will, um, he will get to run properly soon. Uh, usually, when you have pressure, you can see this moves quite freely here. This is the pipe that comes from the tank. Once uh, you have pressure here, the pipe comes all the way back, and you can feel the pressure here as well. So you know if you have pressure coming from the tank. At the moment, it moves freely. So uh, I'm not going to put anything else back in place. I just have the breeder from the crankcase still off, the vacuum still off, but everything else is connected. The manifold is in place. It's not fully tighted, but we'll tighten that later. It's leak free for now. So that's going to uh, fire the computer. So we go into live data so we can see what happens from the start. And while the computer is booting up, there's just one thing I want to show you. Um, obviously you're not going to feel that, but once you open this cap, it smells petrol inside it really smells petrol this car had an oil change as I said to you guys if you heard the video from the beginning had an oil change when he had the timing done so and another thing I want to show you is this look at the oil level you see where it is right there at the top right here is right there where my finger is so that how much oil is on this engine as well obviously half of it is petrol so uh, I already told them uh, I shouldn't even be running this car like this but I already told them as soon as they take the car back he's gonna need oil dropping and uh, new oil in because obviously the old pump has just been putting fuel through the shaft in here which is this pump here it's just been allowing petrol through there into the engine okay and we are loading this um, the only reason why I've showed you this now is because uh, the other day um, I had a feeling about it the other day when I opened the cap um, I just thought about it to check and um, and I went in there to check uh, and I could feel the smell but uh, the engine was just uh, uh, was just being stopped and uh, I didn't really could see the level so I took the opportunity this morning that I haven't started the engine for the last five days or four days uh, I haven't started the engine at all uh, we just put the pump as you've seen I haven't started the engine this morning so the engine is, is, is cold and uh, and obviously as you can see the level is really right up so they can't really leave this car running for much longer uh, like this I like I said I shouldn't even uh, be running the engine here but uh, I don't I don't really want to be now dropping the oil etc so surely it will be okay for us just to try and to take and for them to take the car back and drop the oil etc etc so they'll have definitely to do that there is petrol inside that that uh, engine and the level is is extremely high so let's kind of uh, load the live data and fingers crossed I made the wrong, the right call by telling them that I will, I had a feeling that even the the China pump uh, the China pump, which actually came from China. There's 
Chinese label writing on the labels um, that the China pamper is actually bad as well so let's fingers crossed that's what my problem is okay and we have the live data loaded uh, so one of the reasons guys why I was from the beginning kind of um, also um, inclined to think that my sensor would be good is because when I have no uh, tank pressure uh, low pressure I have about 0 0.30 0 0.31 uh, but once I have the pressure from the tank that goes up to about 0 0.8 so that to me indicates that the, the sensor is probably reading from cold. This is from cold, guys. Uh, so at the moment I have the live data here. So as I said, because the entire fuel system is empty, I do have, um, I will accept that it's not going to go run straight. It's not going to run smooth straight away. But once we have it running for a little bit, it should, uh, it should build pressure and run okay. So guys, fingers crossed. Cross your fingers as well on that side. Let's see if that works. So, press clutch. It's gonna start the engine. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Bang. Straight away. Seen that? Sweet. Wow. I made the right call. I really made the right call. I'm so happy. One lesson learned here. I will take you through in a bit, but a big lesson we learn here. As you can see, from cold straight away, 29% uh, duty on my um, fuel quantity control valve. Straight away, the, the rail pressure set point value about 5 uh, megapascals, so 50 bars. And as you can see in there, the actual rail pressure around the same. So, all good. Engine is running smooth, I will show you. And now I'm just gonna put everything back on. I have a cap here that's off from when I was testing the ECU. So we'll put everything back on and have another look at the end. All in place. And let's gonna wrap this up. Oh dear. It's getting better now outside. But... Right, let's gonna start this again. Oh. Just gonna look at my light data again. There we go. Straight away where you should be. My pressures, etc. Now, right, guess I made the right call on this ECU. Now, I think the main lesson here, guys, is okay, I didn't have now. Going back a little bit, um, I didn't have a, um, a normal uh, pressure gauge to put on that fuel pump, so I don't have one. Um, I might have to get one, but uh, but I think the main lesson here, guys, is we tested it that the ECU was pulsing my valve. That was the main thing. Um, the sensor, yeah, I've checked the sensor. I've checked the wiring, I've checked the voltage coming out of the sensor. Um, as you've seen as well, when there was no pressure at all in the system, was reading 0 0.3 bars. It should read zero, to be honest with you. But you you get a little bit of error, a uh, margin um, for error. So 0 0.3, the, the, the pressure would go up to 0 0.8 as soon as the, you try to crank the engine. So the pump in the fuel tank. So everything was um, kind of pointing to a faulty pump. Um, so obviously when you get another pump, which is here, and it still doesn't work, it makes you wonder if you made the right call. Now this is when you need to know how to test, you need to have a little bit of confidence, you need to read the signs, you need to be sure of um, everything and you need to start the test. Uh, make sure you have your pulse in this case, make sure you have pulse, make sure your eyes are good. Um, because yeah, the, the 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 place where this car came from, when once they fitted this pump, uh, they thought, well, it's going to be something else, uh, and it actually wasn't. It was the pump. It's a China pump, as I said. Uh, there's some Chinese stuff written in there, as you can see. So it is a is a camera that is a pump that came from China, and unfortunately, it's faulty as well. So 
we got this running. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, on these cars, 99.9% .9 of the times, the fault is the pump. Uh, but we had to make sure before we made a call on another pump. So, guys, I don't know. Um, I don't know how I'm going to edit uh, this video because I've been recording these over the last week or two. Because, uh, you know, in the meantime, the, the, the owner had to get the other pump, etc. etc. So I've been waiting, I've been testing. So I don't know exactly how I'm going to edit this. I just saw by this point, everything I've done makes sense. I hope I haven't missed anything uh, and I really hope there's some information here that you guys are going to find useful. So that, that's, the main, that's the main thing. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys still have any questions, any comments, by all means put them below and like always, thanks for watching.